It is the most wonderful time of the year. Happy Halloween season, everyone. And welcome to our first EPP bonus episode of Halloween season 2019. Very excited about this. On today's EPP bonus episode, we have some awesome stories about a spirit coming out to warn a lone woman wandering alone in a graveyard. Yeah. Or was it a spirit? It's very very puzzling as to who the ghost may be in the story. It's a great story. Also, why do our minds sometimes miss the obvious when it comes to the paranormal? Sometimes the only way to fully grasp the gravity of what happened is by reviewing those moments from the past. It's our minds trying to keep us sane, trying to make sense of things. But what does it do when there isn't much sense to be made? Also, a young man discovers his ability to see shadow people. Shadow people that seem to transform from shadow to full body apparition. Just like that. Gives you a new perspective on what a shadow person may actually be. That and more, some great ghost stories on today's EPP bonus episode. As we enter into the Halloween season. So, so excited. As you know, Real Ghost Stories Online, it's been a podcast that's been around now for about six or seven years, but I've been uh, in radio for, let's do the math, it is 2019, uh, 1996. This is my 23rd year of Halloween stories in October. I'm so excited. Sit back, relax, and enjoy EPP bonus episode number 267 of Real Ghost Stories Online. Intuition is a powerful thing. Intuition guides us many times down a path of of either least resistance or safety or or correct behavior, so to speak. If you have a good compass anyway, that should be where it goes. Some of us, not so much. But in, in, in a lot of cases, that intuition is something that we should be listening to. It'll keep us out of a lot of uh, a lot of trouble. Uh, intuition can be very powerful, especially if you're all alone in a secluded area where there's, you know, just come to yourself. And if you happen to then come across another individual, a living individual that maybe shouldn't be there either, that you don't know, that suddenly comes out of nowhere and has an affinity to keeping an eye on you. That's usually not a great sign. It's usually a sign of danger. When your intuition bells and alarms are going off saying, get out, this is not a place for you to be, listening to it is probably a good idea. When you don't listen to it, is there a fail safe? Is there a safety net for those types of situations? Every once in a while, we hear a story like that, where our intuition, our internal warning system is going off saying, get the hell out of there. But we ignore it. I'm okay. I'll get through it. Maybe you won't. And something else intervenes. Something from the other side that then forces you to get out. In our next story, that's exactly what happens. A woman is all alone in a secluded Charleston cemetery when a stranger begins following her. They're the only ones in there. The only ones who'd be able to hear a scream. Thankfully, another scream saves the day. Take a listen. This is an odd story because a possible paranormal element is subtle and not easily seen. In fact, it wasn't until I began reflecting on what happened many months later that I realized I'd had a paranormal encounter. But I think those are often my favorite stories. Those where the strange or otherworldly has tried to blend in with the natural landscape, except something is off or missing. The circle of the normal is left incomplete. 
I was 21, and in my college's gospel choir, we traveled that afternoon to upstate South Carolina to Charleston to stay the weekend, since we had singing engagements and churches there. It was a sunny afternoon in downtown Charleston, and the group was about 25 of us. And about three hours until we'd meet for dinner at Hyman Seafood, a famous Charleston restaurant. We could walk around the city, we were told, using the buddy system, but I've always been a loner, enjoying the quiet of my own mind, so I ignored the instructions and set off by myself. It didn't take me more than 20 minutes to find myself deep in Charleston's web of old streets and cobblestone alleyways. Live oaks the size of ship prows towered between manor house after manor house draped in Spanish moss. Gas lights were lit even during the day, and walking among the iron and stone walls, I could deceive myself easily that I had traveled back in time at least 100 years. Some of the city's oldest structures date to the early 1600s. I had it in mind to find some of the oldest graveyards I could in a city of old graveyards. And as I strolled around a curve on the little side street, I came to a church on my left with a stone entryway opening onto the street by a door-sized gate. Beyond the narrow entryway was a cemetery, secluded in a kind of courtyard, walled in on all sides and visible only through the ironwork fence atop stone along the street. The church and cemetery lay quiet and empty. I felt magnetized through the iron gateway, breathing in the earthy smell of the brick and stone and moss, feeling my muscles relax finally in a still scared space. I began to walk over the soft ground of the cemetery, slow reading each name and epitaph on each headstone. Then someone else walked through the front gate. At first, caught in my solitary world, I didn't look up, but after a moment I sensed weird energy about this person. I looked up and saw a bearded, long-haired man with rumpled clothes, a tightly filled backpack hung with cooking utensils. I realized he was trying not to look at me when I looked at him. I managed to catch his eye and... He looked down as if to study a headstone. As I moved farther into the cemetery, he moved. My heart quickened. I knew he was following me, and I had no other way out besides walking past him. In this hidden graveyard in a quiet side street where we appeared to be alone. The last thing I wanted to do was alert him to my concern for the situation. Now the alarms were ringing in my head. You need to leave, they said, but... Instead of walking directly out like I should have done, I got stubborn and annoyed with the alarms and continued to go deeper into the cemetery. I told myself it was stupid to be afraid. I was in my thought and misstep and from street someone began yelling. I looked up to see two middle-aged ladies walking the way I had come, chatting with each other. Another person, a tall blonde man, was doing a weird fast walk run from the other direction and yelling into the cemetery as he moved. He waved his hands above his head, yelling something like, No, 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 in a kind of reprimanding way. I can't remember his exact words, just a general feeling of them. He was alternating glances towards the gate and the church entryway, and I assumed he was a minister, given his buttoned-up manner of dress and neutral colors in his short, combed and parted, sandy blonde hair. They left the gate open by accident. I thought, by the way, he was acting. Maybe no one is supposed to be in here to begin with. I made eye contact with the running priest guy and waved. I said out loud, embarrassed a little, Oh, okay, and walked toward the gate past the man who was following me, who glanced up a bit, but he kept his back to me. It only took me a few seconds to beat it back to the front of the church, where I assumed I'd meet the minister and I'd apologize. I'd say, I'm sorry, the gate was open. I didn't realize we weren't allowed, but no one was waiting there. I looked out into the street where the two women had made some progress in their direction, but there was no one else. So I walked down past the church a bit, the way the yelling man was headed, and could find no one and no other doorways or open areas where he could have gone. Being young and non-confrontational, I was just happy I didn't have to explain to this stranger why I was in the cemetery when apparently he didn't want me to be. From that day and many months afterward, I didn't think much about that weird interlude there in the cemetery. But as I reflected, the stranger began to seem... One day as I played the whole scene through my mind, I realized something. Though this man was yelling on this sleepy little street, no one else, not the ladies walking past him or the man who was following me, looked towards the sound. It seemed like they hadn't heard anything out of the ordinary. Was I the only one who heard him? And if so, the only one who saw him. And why would that be the case? 
Why would something try to get my attention like that and then disappear? That wraps up the preview portion of this week's EPP bonus episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. Be sure to subscribe, become an extra podcast person, get access to all of this episode jam-packed with some awesome ghost stories, including the full stories of a spirit coming out to warn a lone woman standing in a graveyard of danger, what happens there. Why do our minds sometimes miss the obvious when it comes to the paranormal? What does it take for us to realize something is going on that shouldn't be? Also, a young man discovers his ability to see shadow people. Shadow people that transform into full-bodied apparitions. Find out what he sees when that happens. To become an EPP, an extra podcast person, sign up at ghostpodcast.com. Ghostpodcast.com. All one word there. Five bucks a month, get access to all of our bonus episodes. If you like Patreon, you can become an EPP through Patreon as well. Go to patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Again, five bucks a month there. You get all the bonus episodes, all two 167 of them, brand new ones every single week. You also get access to our advanced episodes of the show released weeks before they go out to the general public. And those are commercial free as well. So it's an extra bonus there for you too. You also get a free uh, e-copy of our book, the audio book now, so now also available to you as an EPP. So lots of great extras there. Ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Keep us on the air. Do appreciate your support. Until next time, I'm Tony Brisky. Thanks for listening. 